Hi everyone. Uh, today I'd like to talk about choosing colors for your painting and I get a lot of questions from beginner watercolorists who ask me what paints they should buy and that's actually a very difficult question to answer because everybody's different about the colors that they like but one thing that I have noticed is that people tend to buy too many colors and you know watercolors are extremely expensive so you want to be frugal about um, the colors that you buy and I would always recommend that you start off with few colors because with the um, three colors of blue red and yellow you can make most colors by mixing and those are the three primary colors and, and you'd have a black and and not not really a white because white we use the white of the paper most of the time although sometimes I use some white gouache if I've lost my whites but I wanted to do a little demonstration where I only use two colors to do a somewhat monochromatic painting so I'm going to start off by doing the sky first and just um, showing you you know less is more and you really don't need to buy a lot of paint especially to begin with because I find that when you're a beginner watercolorist you don't know um, what your style is yet and I am sitting with drawers and drawers of of paints that I probably will never use because I I bought these colors in the beginning thinking I needed them and actual fact a lot of them have dried up I mean I've got four drawers full of paints and I probably only use about maybe six six colors in my in my watercolor paintings and um, you know it's it's really now my sky is a little too too um, dark so because I wanted a, a darker foreground and this is two colors this is indigo and burnt sienna so um, just going to leave a little bit of white there okay and I'm just doing a very simple landscape to show you how you can actually do a fairly nice painting with just two colors and I'm mixing these in various um, light and dark things because I because I want to um, have it as a mostly gray painting and although this doesn't look gray right now it actually dries fairly gray these this you can make a nice gray in fact with um, with these two colors and because I want a little bit of texture in that landscape I'm just going to put some of my not a lot but I just want a little bit of texture here I'm just going to let that sit in there for a while there now I'll let this dry and I'll finish it off and you'll see you can I'm going to put a tree in here and with just two colors I can make a fairly appealing little landscape and this is only a five by seven which I'll use as a card to give to someone so once it's dry I'll paint in a tree while we're waiting for that to dry I'll just do another quick painting using um, two colors actually three colors this time I'm going to use um, raw sienna raw sienna is a real workhorse color it's used a lot in skies um, and it's just a very nice useful color and so let's use a little bit of um, burnt sienna with some neutral tint in it to turn it down Okay, so I'm going to just I'm going to keep this wet and trying to keep it loose because I don't really want to do a 
painting as such. I'm just doing some abstract things to demonstrate that you can um, do some nice work with um, just a few colors. And so I'm going to do this in the sky here and I wanted to be quite dramatic so I'm going to let it spritz it so that it runs down towards the land and creates a more dramatic sky. Yeah, kind of like that. Because it dries lighter, I'm going to go over it and kind of like that. It's quite a nice wispy little card I can make for someone. So that's that's those three colors are raw sienna, burnt sienna and a neutral tint and made a fun card. Let's go back to my first one and I want to just add a small tree just to give it some height here because the, in the other one we have you know we have the sky coming down and you've got some verticals and horizontals you always want some verticals and some horizontals um, things going in the opposite direction that creates more interest in the painting do my tree and I don't want to do a huge or thick tree I just want to do some Just a few and this may maybe make the bottom a little thicker and then I'm going to put some leaves on that and so I do want maybe I'll we'll add a third color to this just to have a little bit of green in there. Now as far as greens go, one of my favorite greens is sap green, but I never um, use it by itself. I always add a little bit of burnt sienna. The greens that you mostly buy in tubes don't look as natural as in nature. So you always need to sort of tone them down. Often they're fairly bright, so you need to tone them down a little. And I'll put it on a piece of paper, I'll show you. Sap green by itself. It's very bright, slightly garish. And this is sap green mixed with the burnt sienna. And I just it's just like a more natural green. You can see that. So that's what I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use my hog's hair brush. It gives me better texture on the leaves. I usually use that. Yeah, that's better. I prefer that. So, um, what you can also do, I can also actually just add some leaves around the bottom of the tree to add a little more texture to the painting. Okay. So now I uh, just want to, basically this was an exercise in demonstrating how you don't need a lot of color to make an interesting painting. 
Um, they both ended up with three colors in the end um, because I added some green with the with the tree leaves there. So when you buying paints, don't think you need um, ten greens, ten blues, yellows, etc. Just get a few of each, and you will have a feeling, a sense of which colors appeal to you. And I just wanted to mention that I'm having a summer sale on my courses on teachable.com. So if you're interested in signing up for any of my courses, I'll put a link beneath the video and the coupon code that you can use. Actually, So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.